Hi there, welcome to video one of the HTML CSS fundamentals course. And today we're going to start by answering the question, what is HTML and CSS? And to put it plainly, HTML and CSS are both computer languages that are used to write web pages. It's as simple as that, and that's why we want to learn it. Um, it's technically considered a markup language because essentially what you're doing is you're using the code in HTML and CSS to mark up, or in other words, tell the browser, tell the computer how to display and how to show text and images and all sorts of fun stuff on web pages. Um, the reason we call it a markup language is to distinguish it from what's technically a programming language. HTML and CSS, I don't really consider them to be programming languages or computer programming languages because you're not actually telling the computer to do anything, right? You're not technically programming any actions for the computer. All you're doing is you're just using these little tags in your code to tell the computer how you want things to look. And the good news is, is that that makes HTML and CSS actually really easy to learn because it's really simple when it comes down to it. And there's a lot of different things that you can do with it and there's lots of different codes that you can look up online and special neat tricks that you can do. But at the end of the day, there aren't actually all that many moving parts to HTML and CSS, CSS, which makes it a really great way to get into computer programming uh, because it is still a computer language. Um, and once you get used to being sort of, you know, rigorous with your code and everything, then, you know, if you want to learn some uh, other computer languages, um, it's certainly a great way to, to move into that. Um, so let me show you an example of what HTML looks like. We'll start with that. Here's a page, and this is actually uh, the, the page that we're going to be building in this course. It's pretty straightforward, um, but uh, I'm going to jump ahead and just click on View. I'm in Chrome right now. I'm going to click on View, Developer, and View Source. And this is just a way that we can have a quick look at the code that makes up this particular page. All browsers Browsers, all web browsers, by the way, have some sort of facility to let you see the code, but we'll be talking more about that later. Right now, I just want to show you this code. It's It might look kind of overwhelming right now, but don't worry, we're going to demystify all of this, and by the end of this course, you'll know exactly what all of this means. So this is an example of HTML co code. Um, so second question is, what kind of software do I need to write HTML and CSS? And the good news here is that there's really only two pieces of software you need. And I guarantee you, I can almost guarantee you that you have, if not one, both of these already on your computer. Um, the first one, uh, which is maybe kind of obvious, is you need a web browser. You need something so that you can see your web page, right? So I guess that's kind of obvious, but let's talk about web browsers. Lots of different web browsers in the world. Um, there's uh, starting off with, let's actually look at Firefox, very popular open source website. You can download that and I'll be providing all the links in the show notes. Um, Firefox is a very popular open source, uh, excellent web browser. Another one is Google Chrome. I like Google Chrome and I'm going to be using Google Chrome uh, for these, uh, for all of the, uh, the screencasts from this point forward. Um, but it, it certainly doesn't matter. You can pick the the uh, um, web browser of your choice, and that's totally fine. Um, another one is Opera. Um, you can download Opera at opera.com. Um, and it's actually not quite as popular as the others, but it's actually really an excellent web browser as well. Um, finally, I also have installed on my computer Safari. It's available for both Mac and PC. You can download that. The only one that I can't show you is um, Internet Explorer, but I'm going to show you the page right here, um, only because I'm running a Mac and I can't download and install it. If I could, I would, but I can't. Um, but if you're on a PC, you can certainly download and install these. All of these are free, and I'll tell you what. I actually recommend that you download and install at least three different web browsers. And you might be asking yourself, why? Why do I need three different web browsers? Well, because all these web browsers kind of have very small differences in the way that they show, or in other words, they render web pages. And as a web page designer, when you're building web pages, you kind of want to know that. So testing your pages out in different web browsers is a great idea. And if you have these different web browsers installed in your computer, I mean, they're free anyways, you might as well. Um, it's just really easy for you to go ahead and load your web page in a whole 
bunch of different browsers and see how they're going to look differently in different browsers. Um, I also recommend that you have the latest versions of all these web browsers. Um, and that's usually, it's usually pretty easy. Most web browsers have some way that you can just go into the preferences and download and make sure you've got the latest version. So spend five minutes downloading and updating all your web browsers. You're not going to regret it. Second piece of software you need to write HTML and CSS code is a plain text editor. And most of you already have a plain text editor on your computer. If you've got a Mac, you have text edit. Um, if you have a PC, you probably have notepad. Um, but I'll tell you what, you can actually do better than that. Either of these will work uh, to write HTML and CSS, but there are some dedicated text editors out there that are made specifically for writing code. And once you get used to using these, um, they're not hard to use, but when you start using these, they're actually going to make your life a lot simpler. So I recommend that you go and download these. Oh yeah, by the way, they're free too. Um, all these tools are free, which makes me very, very happy. So the first program, and this is for Mac, uh, is called Text Wrangler. It's free, okay? It's actually technically, it's the little brother to BB Edit, which is a proprietary commercial program. But Text Wrangler itself is awesome is really really good i use it to do all my coding and honestly it's it's terrific so if you've got a mac um, and you're looking for something to just get you started with definitely download text wrangler um, just go to the link download text wrangler and install it on your computer it looks like this okay and it's got a lot of nice little features you can be editing multiple pages um, simultaneously by switching between all these see how i'm doing that we're going to be doing that in these screencasts and in fact i'm going to be using text wrangler in combination with uh, a web browser to demonstrate what we're doing and um, so highly recommend that if you've got a mac download text wrangler don't try to do this just a notepad um, if you've got a pc the, the program that it, I recommend is called Notepad++, and it's also really, really good. Unfortunately, I don't have any screenshots to show you, uh, but Notepad++ is also free, okay? It's a free and open source plain text editor, and it is terrific for um, uh, editing source code and all that sort of thing. So that's going to make life really simple for you. So if you've got a, a PC, go to Notepad++, download and install that particular software, and you're going to be, uh, you're going to be golden. So, um, last but not least, I want to mention. Uh, some people often ask me, why can't I just use, you know, uh, a, a word processor like Word or LibreOffice? Um, word processors actually add a ton of formatting to to documents, right? Like it's not just you. Yeah, you can you can write your t your text and stuff, but then there's a whole bunch of you know bold and italics and page numbers and all sorts of things like that. We don't want that. HTML and CSS files have to be just pure text only files. And yeah, in LibreOffice there is a way to save files as text only in LibreOffice, but it's a kind of a roundabout way to do it. And plus, word processors are not really meant to be. Yeah, use. They're not really meant for that. They're really meant for making documents pretty. They weren't really built to help you write code. Whereas text editors like Text Wrangler and Notepad++, they were really designed to help you build code. Um, so I'm always a big believer in use the right tool for the job. So, you know, keep your word processor for word processing and instead download and install either Text Wrangler or Notepad and you'll be set. So that's it for this screencast. I hope that you liked it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.